Being a victim of crime is a traumatic event, and you may not necessarily know where to turn for help in coping with that trauma. Community agencies work together in a system to provide services to victims, but in reality, this system sometimes falls apart or there are cracks in it. Unfortunately, because of this, you may find yourself not connected to the services you are looking for. This was the case for Anne Tavares in dealing with the murder of her son. What, what I found is um, there was no support from the time the police came to give us the news until basically I worked myself through some system, through bagging here and bagging there, who could help me. Community agencies recognize these cracks and do their best to avoid them, but remind victims that if they find themselves in this situation, it's important to persevere. This resource is part of this effort to keep victims connected to appropriate services. Please take note of the contact information provided for the different agencies that may be able to help, support, and or provide information for you. And do not hesitate to call these services if you have any questions or concerns. Support really does make a difference as you undertake this journey. I, I found that I asked myself a lot, what's the next step? And every step that I made led me to a different agency that was able to give me information that educated me on what my choices were. And when you have education on what your choices are, then you're better informed to make them and you make more sound choice for yourself and you make choices that you can live with and you can move on to the next step of your life. Victim Services of Middlesex County is a not-for-profit charitable organization that provides direct service to victims of crime and tragic circumstance. Um, we've been in existence for just over 10 years. And the program started primarily with what's called the Vickers Program. Vickers refers to the Victim Crisis Assistance and Referral Service. It's a program that's offered to victims that have been impacted by crime or tragic circumstances. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's delivered by trained crisis response volunteers at the request of various police services. Officers or emergency services personnel contact our crisis response team through a dedicated crisis pager line. Our team leaders receive the information and at that point dispatch volunteers to the location of wherever the victim is and at that point do an assessment to determine what type of needs or what type of support is required. Individuals can access service by contacting the local police force. Oftentimes police make referrals directly to the crisis pager and individuals also can seek support by contacting the office directly through a self-referral if they have not um, reported their crime or had their incident reported to a police service. Emotional support also includes access and referral services to various community programs for long-term support and assistance. Practical assistance can be inclusive but not limited to transportation, um, assisting in making phone calls, providing any type of emotional support or practical assistance that is deemed appropriate at the time. So in, in 2005, I um, was the guardian of a young boy whose mother was um, dying of cystic fibrosis. And, and I guess for me, the, um, the whole experience of, of that happening and not knowing t what to expect and, and um, the process, what, what was going to happen um, that day, um, was nerve-wracking. We didn't really know um, who to call and, and what to do. And, and um, the emergency response people that came that day, they, they made the call for us, which was really great because we didn't have to worry about, um, you know, who to call first. When we're called to a scene, we usually arrive either with a police officer or we're met at the scene by a police officer, and we're introduced as victim services. And as a rule, we're sort of there as a very quiet, calm presence. We may be there for minutes or hours. We may never say anything, or they may have many questions that we can then, in turn, answer them, guide them through things, or make proper referrals for, you know, f for their future help down the road. It is designed to help uh, victims of uh, specific crimes in the sense that uh, victims of homicide, uh, attempted murder, uh, sexual assault, uh, domestic violence, hate crimes. So it's very specific. Uh, those are the only crimes that it will cover. Victims have um, access to 
three basic services. The first one is counseling, which covers 10 sessions or $1,000, whichever comes first. The second one is funeral expenses, and that covers up to $5,000. And the third one, which is a very broad, um, has, there's a number of things that are covered under the emergency uh, repairs. The Support Link program is a joint initiative between the Ministry of Attorney General and Rogers AT&T. The services that we provide for the Support Link program, there are four basic things that we do. When I meet with a client, I do some safety planning with them, and it's an intensive safety plan. I also provide them with a pre-programmed 911 cell phone if they don't have a cell phone already. We do uh, referrals to the community, so all sorts of different agencies throughout the community that can help this individual, as well as um, ongoing follow-up. So they're required to call me maybe every two or three weeks, um, sometimes a month. Victims can access the program by calling us directly, or we also receive a lot of referrals from the Vickers program. If you would like to contact Victim Services of Middlesex County, please call 519-245-6660 or visit their website at www.vsmiddlesex.org. The Family Consultant and Victim Services Unit with the London Police offer similar services to those offered by Victim Services Middlesex County, but are offered to those people who live in the City of London. Family Consultant Victim Services Unit is part of London City Police, and our role is to provide crisis intervention to victims of crime and tragic circumstances. We also get involved with families who are going through a difficult time, maybe involved in a dispute of some sort, and we'll get involved and try to provide some crisis intervention to them. When people are going through a crisis situation, it's often a pivotal time in their lives, and they're overwhelmed in terms of how to cope and how to deal with the situation. So our role is to come in. We can attend at scene, wherever the situation is occurring, and assist people in terms of helping them to cope with the situation, assessing what's happening for them, what their needs are, what the biggest concern is that they have, and helping them to address that concern. It could be by providing some short-term problem-solving skills, providing some practical assistance, with whatever needs to be done and then connecting them to the agencies that can provide some longer term support and assistance for them. People can simply call our office. Um, our hours are from 8 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, otherwise, uh, we get involved with people who've had some police involvement. So most of the time, um, what happens is that police are involved with individuals and then we will have contact with them, whether it is that the officers call us out to attend at the scene or we follow up with people and see what they need. To contact the Family Consultants Program, you can call 519-661-5636. When dealing with the criminal court process, a very beneficial service to victims is the Victim Witness Assistance Program. Um, for many victims and witnesses, it's difficult to navigate the criminal court system. And so the role of the Victim Witness Assistance Program is to offer victims and witnesses information about the criminal court process in general and also about their specific case. Many victims and witnesses call VWAP directly. We also receive referrals from the police services and from the Crown's office so that we can outreach to victims and let them know a little bit about the program we offer and the services. It's a voluntary program and the services are free to clients. Some of the services that we offer is outreach to victims. We also offer services to victims um, in terms of giving them information about the criminal court system in general and their case in specific. We also talk to them about what their needs are and what their concerns are so that we can better look at what agencies in the community might be able to assist them so that we can refer them to those agencies. We also uh, can be a link for them between the Crown's office and the investigating officer. That way we ensure that their concerns, their interests, their input gets to the investigating officer or to the Crown's office. 
We can set up appointments for the victims and witnesses to meet with the Crown. And also, um, if there are any release conditions or probation orders that um, are involved in their case, we review what those court orders mean so the victim understands those um, papers and also can provide them with copies of those. So our role is really to be able to inform them, to keep them up to date, and to give them a voice in how the prosecution is proceeding. If the case goes to trial, we offer victims and witnesses an opportunity to have a tour of the courtroom, to understand a little bit about court etiquette and what they can expect that day. And on that day, we offer them a separate waiting room to wait in prior to um, them testifying. I also had the good fortune to be involved with a victim witness assistance program. And what they do is they set you up ready to be in the courtroom. They go through where you're going to sit or stand, who's going to be there. Uh, they provide a place for you that's away from where uh, my ex-husband was, so we didn't have to come in contact with him. Uh, we were kept safe, and uh, if we needed to leave their offices, someone went with us in case he was in the common area. They provided someone to be in the courtroom with us because we couldn't be in the courtroom with each other when we testified. So there was no real support in the courtroom for you when you were testifying, but they gave you that support. So that was a very good program to, to have contact with. Services provided through this program begin once police have laid charges and continue until the court case is over. If you would like to contact the Victim Witness Assistance Program, call 519-660-3041 or for more information, please take note of the website displayed on your screen. The Victim Support Line is a province-wide, multilingual, toll-free information line providing a range of services to victims of crime. The Victim Support Line offers information and referral to support services in your community, pre-recorded information about the criminal justice system, and access to information about provincially sentenced offenders. And finally, this service also allows you to express concerns about the availability or quality of victim services. You can call the Victim Support Line toll-free at 1-888-579-2888. The service is available from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week, or you can visit the website listed on your screen. The Victim Notification System informs victims about the status and scheduled release date of provincially incarcerated offenders. Another service that I um, utilized was the Victim Notification Service. And you contact them and you register your file for yourself and the offender with them. And anytime anything happens with the offender while they're incarcerated, you're notified. So if they should escape, you're called. Or if there is a parole hearing or an early release hearing, you are contacted. When they are actually going to be released, you are contacted. If they move locations, you are told that they have been moved and they're not no longer in uh, the establishment that they were in. So I did that, and they contacted me to say that he had applied for early release. They gave me contact information and who I could speak to to find out what I needed to do if I wanted to speak with the parole board. If you would like to register with the Victim Notification System, call the Victim Support Line, which is available toll-free at 1-888-579-2888. You can also access more information by visiting the website listed on your screen. For information on federally incarcerated offenders, those whose sentence is more than two years, please call the National Parole Board at 1-800-518-8817. The Criminal Injuries Compensation Board is a tribunal that operates under the Compensation for Victims of Crime Act here in Ontario. Uh, the board is, is part of the Ministry of the Attorney General. It's an independent agency. 
if someone uh, is the victim of a violent crime, and it has to happen in Ontario, and they've been injured as a result, then they can make application to the board. Well, most applications come from the person themselves who has been injured as a result of a crime of violence. But if a child is, is harmed or if someone who's incapable of acting on their own behalf, then a legal guardian can, can apply on their behalf. Um, we, we certainly deal with situations where uh, someone has been killed as a result of a violent crime. And in that case, families can apply. Uh, for any expenses that w were they incurred, usually funeral expenses, as a result of the death of the person. And if the person had dependents, uh, a partner or children who are dependent upon them, then they can apply to the board to have those dependents uh, compensated uh, until they are adults themselves. Now, people get confused sometimes about how severe their injuries need to be. And frankly, we see everything from a broken baby finger to somebody who's a quadriplegic because they've been shot in the back during a, a bank robbery. So it really is the whole run of physical uh, injuries, but also psychological injuries. So uh, we certainly look at the, the problems that people face in dealing with the rest of their lives when they have been uh, terrorized, um, being kidnapped, or uh, where they've undergone a, a lot of emotional abuse uh, as well as physical or sexual abuse in a, in a long-term domestic relationship. It's really easy to make an application to the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board. The first step usually is to call the board and the number is on the screen and that's a 1-800 number so it's not uh, a cost to people and someone one of the staff at the board will speak to uh, to you get the, the enough information to begin the claim process people can also come uh, personally uh, if they are in the Toronto area our, uh, our offices are on University Avenue in Toronto, and the address is on the, on the screen. So they can either write to that address, or they can phone, or they can fax, or they can drop in off the street and just speak to one of our staff about it. What we really hope people will do is understand that this is a victim-friendly service. So if you have questions, please call our toll-free number. We also have a website, and the website is, is also on the screen. And you can get a lot of information about the process from the website. Um, anybody is able to, to call and get information on behalf of somebody else as well, but only the person themselves or their legal guardian can actually apply.